how to work with compound interest in 106 seconds. Let's go. Whenever it comes to working with compound interest, guys, the key thing to remember is going to be that the amount of interest earned in each time period actually depends on the amount of money in the account on the previous time period. And because of that, each time period, the amount of interest earned is actually going to change. But luckily, we don't have to worry too much about doing all of these different calculations. We can just use this formula here, which is going to be useful whenever we're working with compound interest. And this formula basically tells us that the end amount at the end of the overall set of time periods is equal to the start amount P times by one plus our interest rate as a decimal raised to the power of the number of time periods. Let's make this clear by doing this example. The question says that Ricky puts £11,750 in a savings account which pays 4% compound interest per year. Then the question asks us how much he has after 11 years of saving. So we're going to have to substitute in 11,750 as our start amount. We're going to have to substitute 4% in as our interest rate. And we're going to have to substitute 11 in as our number of time periods. Let's get it done. So we're going to have that A, our end amount is equal to 11,750 times by, we're going to have one plus our interest rate as a decimal, 4% as a decimal, dividing it by 100, that's going to be 0 0.04. Then we're going to raise this to our number of time periods, which is going to be 11. Now, guys, we can bing this into our calculator. And luckily, I've already done that. So when we do that, what are we going to get? We're going to get £18,088.59 and pence to two decimal places, guys. Check that you can do that with your calculator because this does come up a lot.